So we'll talk about Philippines depression, post-Philippines depression, as it was put by uh, Sestyle. Does it exist? Well, the answer is, it's a change of perspective. That's all it is. It's, it, you get it from traveling. It's not just Philippines, because my view on Muslims, for example, is very different to you, you guys, um, predominantly, because I've spent time in the Middle East in at least five countries. So I have a different perspective to most people because I've spent time with people from different regions, different nationalities, um, different cultures, and as such, I get a different perspective on it than the average person gets off the media. So there's a prime example where my mindset's slightly different. Um, but then you've got things like the positivity of the Philippines. People talk to everybody. Women are approachable and talk to you and often want you to date them. Um, 12 hours of sunshine every day. An upbeat attitude where people, even with nothing, are content. People generally may not have any money, but they ain't bothered. You know, they can't fix it, so I worry about it. It seems more of the attitude. Manana. We'll sort it tomorrow. Um, corruption in the Philippines is there in big letters, but at the same time, it's in your face. They're, they're more honest with their corruption, I would say. <laughs> um, and when you meet a partner in the Philippines, they're generally very loving. They're very focused on marriage. They're very focused on the family. They're very focused on their husband you'll find that they do not like their husband going out with his shoes unpolished or whatever. They want their husband to look at the best because A, that is their husband, but B, it's also a reflection on them because they're seeing is not looking after their husband if he goes out with a crumpled shirt, for example. So as such, they take more pride in their partner. They take a lot of pride in being married, etc., etc. They take it very seriously. So... The first thing you got there is the women are more approachable, though. Um, you can ask, oh, do you fancy going out for a date or something? Or do you fancy going for a beer or something? In the West, all this stuff is changing. I'll, t I'll flip it to the UK now. UK, everything revolves around money. It doesn't matter what it is. If you need a, if you're renting somewhere, buying somewhere, it revolves around money. Um, if you want something done, it costs you money. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I get done in the Philippines doesn't cost me a thing because they know I do stuff for them or you know their kid was sick last year and I helped them with medication or something people have a long memory and they'll do stuff for free because they, they know I'll take care of them so there's a lot of stuff people do not want paid for um, in the UK everything costs so going to work costs you a lot of money. Going to everything conforms to something. Everything is structured around a process. It's a we we call it the factory. The UK is the factory, as we call it. To my wife, when I go back to UK, I say I'm going back to the factory this week. Um, because it's all clock on, clock off. You drive everything structured. You must do this. You must do that. There's a process for this. Oh, you, you're going overseas. Have you filled in a form to say that your car is not parked on the road because you're not actually in the country? We've done that yet. Oh, you haven't done this. So there, there's a process for everything. And it's just paperwork after paperwork. Philippines does it, but generally you don't see most of it. Um, it's not to the same extent. You've got the... The women aspect are where there's too much binge drinking. Um, there's a lot of unapproachable women. That often have attitude issues. Because, I, I mean, I'll see... I'll give you an example. There's a guy um, I know. He, 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 I mean, he's not the handsomest guy, but he's, he's just friendly. And there's... A few women I know, they 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 because all work in the same place. They'll go, oh, that he he was he was trying to uh, he was trying to chat me up the other day, blah blah blah. And, uh, and then you know I'll, I'll speak to them. I say, oh, did you bump into 
Colette the other day, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah. I was going out to get coffee for everyone else in the office, and I thought I'll, I'll, I'll get her one on the way. He wasn't chatting her up at all. The women are just giving it some of that just to create an argument and make out that he's some seedy pervert when he's not. He's just a nice guy. He's a friendly guy. Um, no, he's not attractive, etc. But hey-ho, so what? The guy is actually just being friendly. As such, he's persecuted by these old women's sewing circle that just are a nest of vipers. Um, so you've got that element where a lot of guys just don't want any hassle anymore. They've moved aside. You know, I was watching uh, The Intern the other day. And in that, there was a moment where they said, oh, guys haven't decided where they sit in the modern world. It's around that sort of phrasing. And I thought, what are you talking about? Guys haven't changed. Guys are the same. Women have changed. Women don't know where they want to be. Because they go, oh, well, we want to be a career woman. It's like, oh, women don't get the top jobs in the UK or whatever. No, because they have kids. They decide they want to go part-time. Because guys will continue on the career path because they don't become house husbands or not to the, the level that women give birth to and decide that they want a career change or reduce their hours, etc., that will affect their work. Because that's not factored in on these things where they go, most jobs are taken by men. Because the reality is it's nothing to do with that. It's to do with genetics. It's to do with the fact that they give birth. It's to do with they decide they want to work part-time. Priorities change. But they don't talk about that because guys are obviously selfish. Or, should we say, it would make the whole statistic a complete farce. Um, but... This is the thing. You get all this, oh, well, we want this, we want that, we want this. We want the top job, but at the same time, we um, can't really do it because we need to go part-time because I've just had my first child, whatever, and I want the job, but I can't do it because I only want part-time working, and that's an eight-year-a-week job. These are the things that are going on, and, it, and guys are just going, I can't be bothered. I'll be honest, I do. I, I wouldn't date a Western woman again. I just can't be bothered with it. And it's not, oh, were you sexist, that? No, I just can't be bothered with the hassle. Because when, when you've been to the Philippines, you've got women that, A, they're approachable, but B, they take their relationship seriously. They don't go out binge drinking. They don't um, look to cheat on you. They don't see that half of everything you've got is theirs plus what's theirs is theirs um they see everything you know marriage is marriage you know it is not oh i got married i you know and then next year i don't like him now so we got divorced marriage is a commitment in the philippines it's a different thing because they're doing it because they're actually true catholics in many ways um i have no religious belief i have a contractual belief I signed a contract of marriage as such that is binding. Um, I have no religious belief in it whatsoever. But the marriage was important to my wife and the contract is important to me because I've signed it to say this is it, this is it. I'm married for life now. That's it. And that's how I commit to, you see. Once I committed, that's it. And then my wife's the same. Marriage is marriage. It's not, oh, a bit like a ring. I'll, I've got married, blah, blah, blah. It is, we're committed to marriage. That's it. Once we signed it, signed, sealed, that's it. There's no going, backing out. There's nothing. We're married. We're committed to it. There'll be up, up times and down times. At the same time, we'll do it together. So that aspect is often missing in the UK. I think the divorce rate is 50%, and it would be much higher if people could afford to separate. Because at the end of the day, houses are too expensive, people have locked themselves in debt, as such, they're generally unhappy. Um, this is the other side of the UK, is everything revolves around money. Everything's materialistic. Everyone, you know, if somebody gets a new phone at work, it's like, oh, you got a new phone, what you got, what you got? Well, I don't care, it's a phone. I haven't, my, mine's, I think I'm on the Note 3 or something. But at the same time, I only buy stuff when it's free capital. You know, if I've done a contract and set a fixed amount for the year and I go over it, 
that's when I buy some gifts because it normally means I've been away from home a lot longer than I should have been. So as such, we'll treat ourselves. But it doesn't stop us going out for meals and stuff when we go home and you know doing a lot of stuff we should have done. Um, I mean, when I went out to Oman, for example, when I come back, we went to see Creed live in concert with VIP tickets and stuff. So we met the band and things. I, said, you know, that's the sort of thing. And before anyone said, "Oh, we don't like Creed," well, I didn't even know who Creed were until I went, and I actually do like the band now. <laughs> it, I, that, the concert actually changed my because um, I didn't even—I'd never heard of them before. Um, but they were playing live in Manila, so we flew up and went to see them live. But the point is, while well, marriage is a commitment, 110%, and you'll see a lot of guys, their marriages are rock solid because they have the right partner. They found their soulmates. They've got somebody that is committed to them as much as they're committed to the, um, as they are committed to them. They're committed to each other 100%. And that, that is something... I could not guarantee with any woman in the UK. And it's not me being oh, he's being sexist or something. It's reality. If 50% of the people end up in divorces, what's that say? I don't. It's a 50-50 odd at best. But then you've got the materialistic stuff. Everything's materialistic and consumerist. And, oh, what about your job? See, jobs are nothing. I couldn't care less about my job. My last job I quit, and I told them why I left and everything else. And they threatened me with some legal action if I developed anything. Because um, they're saying that anything I've developed, um, I must have stolen or stuff. But the fact is, I haven't written it yet. I haven't made it yet. What they're trying to do is lay claim to something I haven't even made yet. That is the UK. Corporate greed. Dirty, grubby, horrible corporates. Um, so my viewpoint on this is to hell with them. Uh, to hell with the corporate world, to hell with selfish greed. And why would I worry about my career? Because this whole career ladder, I look at the nonsense on LinkedIn with these guys that creep, keep creating these courses out of thin air or not to nonsense, but then make it compulsory. Um, Sipsy, for example, they're, they're saying, well, because well, I left Sipsy, um, I say, well, if you join again, you you might have to do an ethics course. You can shove the ethics course. I've got ethics. That's why I left my last job. The, the, the company I left, though, is one of your corporate members, and they're unethical. So don't turn around and say I need to do an ethics course um, because I had enough ethics to leave the business because of the way it was run. Um, so my whole view on here is that it's dirty, it's grubby, don't worry about your career, you always find a way. Um, this takes me back to something many moons ago. I was working at a, working, I used to be um, a carpenter, I used to build flat back houses. Place had been bought by its competitor because it made a profit for the first time in 10 years, so the first thing they did is sell it to its competitor because um, they had a restructure and we basically got paid for what we worked at. So our volume went up two and a half times because we're getting paid for what we were worth. Um, as such, it shot into a profit in quite a short period of time. It actually paid off the debt, everything else, ba ba bang by actually putting the business and putting its people first. But as soon as it did that, it worked. And then the first thing the uh, corporates did was sell it. <laughs> Made 60 people redundant. But the the point being is I was going on holiday um get me redundant so i took another job on this other place and i went there and they were paying minimum wage to everybody and a couple of guys were doing the some um kitchen kitchen fitting work and cornices they were doing the cornices um and i turned around and asked them well because they were contracted in they were getting 12 pounds an hour blah 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 long story short i went and Talk to these other guys. I called their agency, got a, a job starting on the Wednesday. This was Monday. And the funny thing is, I, long story short, a lot of the guys wouldn't leave that factory because the job was safe. A job that pays minimum wage for heavily skilled guys that are worth about eight times more than they were getting paid. Now, the first thing I want to say is this isn't all about money. 
because I work seasonally. I generally do not work through the year. You'll find I'll work three months, six months, and that'll be about it for the year because I hit the tax threshold. No, there's no point to me earning it unless I go self-employed and actually generate expenses and stuff. And then I've got this whole rigmarole of having to keep a business up and running and all the taxes and everything involved in it. So generally, I'll just do pay as you earn, stop the work, leave, put in for a tax rebate, and that's me. I've got no headaches, nothing to worry about. But the, the, the whole point here is a lot of people are scared. In their work, they're scared, scared about losing their job. They, they're not going to get a pay rise, so as such, the companies do not give them one. Um, they're worried. There's all this pressure put on people. Uh, like I say with these training courses, like, oh, you've got to do an ethics course. No, I won't. I'm not doing an ethics course. I'm not put, well, when I say that, I'm not paying £140 to do an ethics course when you've actually got a corporate member that you would not throw out for their unethical ways um, because they give you money. Um, I'm not giving you 140 quid to do an ethical course when I'm ethical. Um, but the whole point is it's got nothing to do with the industry anyway. It's just money. And that's the whole point. Everything's about taking money. UK, take, 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 take. Generally in the Philippines, people will leave you alone. As such, it's less stressful, less depressing. Um, people are all approachable, friendly, which is why when you go back to the West, you can see everything in your face that is completely different and you sit there going, I don't want to be here anymore. But i uh, got to bear in mind, I also lived abroad most of my life. As such, my perspective is not Philippines-based but global. But the marriage side of it, etc., comes from the Philippines. Because, like I said, up till I met my wife, I was not going to get married. Um, no interest in it whatsoever. I'm not religious either. But it was because of my wife. So I hope that helps. But yeah, you will get, you will feel quite down once you start looking and comparing to your life in the Philippines to your life in the West. Um, it's why some people would rather die in the Philippines broke than go back to the US, UK, or whatever, spend six months there, and then go back. Um, they'd rather just struggle. Um, that's why, you know, when I say they have nothing in the West, it's not. I'm not just talking about family and friends. I'm talking about they have no connection with it anymore. They're disconnected from it. They just see it as vulgar. Um, it's just not what. Well, it's just unfriendly. It's just not a nice place. And I understand with them completely. Here I am in Spain. I'm not sat in the UK. Um, I've got a whole ream of stuff I could do about Spain. But Spain is generally upbeat. Its biggest headaches, paperwork, um, everything else is great. So what would I say the effects would be of depression relating to traveling to the Philippines? Well, the first thing I would say is you feel depressed. You feel hollow. You feel disconnected. You feel like you've lost something. You're not complete because you found somewhere that makes you happy. And now going back to a place that you feel you're not part of, the whole thing changes. You're perspective on relationships can change your perspective on your workplace you no longer care, care about your career you no longer care about materialistic nonsense your whole drive is about a whole new way of life and you can have depression out of it but you can also have positive aspects out of it most of the people i know that um have had this change with a meeting with the right person have cleared all their debt. They've been financially stable. They've focused on what's important. They've gone more down the route of a simplistic life that financially is better for them. As a person, it makes them more rounded, more positive, more upbeat. But that initial going back and starting from scratch to change your entire life can be quite hard you feel like quite hollow inside you feel like your feels like your heart's been ripped out or something like that because you you no longer feel at home in the west 
your home is the Philippines. And would I say it's good um, to go through this process? I would say long term, answer would be yes because you can actually change your entire life, not just based on the Philippines, but learning about the stuff around you, learning that things can be changed for the positive side and the better. You know, you can make it happen. And this is this is the big bit people don't really talk about, is once you start hitting that, okay, I want to get married, I want a house, I want a family, blah, 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 and you will move hell and high water to make it happen. That's where the positive sides come from. Um, would you look at dating Western women? You find a lot of guys would never. The, once that's changed, it's changed forever. Um, it'd be very hard to change that. I mean, it, it's... Because it's not just about, you know... Filipino women being very beautiful, etc. In general, it, it's 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 about the the inner being. It's about the culture. The it's hard to explain until you've gone through the process. But you just feel like a complete new person. It opens your eyes. It changes your perspective on the world, and you just make. A much happier, better person out of it. And that's what I say, you know, you go back to the West and it just hits you like a, you know, that plane coming down, just landing 3 a.m. or whatever, minus six, and you get out the plane and just go, I don't want to be here. And a friend of mine had the same in Spain. Uh, he went back to the UK for two weeks and his first thought as soon as he got off the plane was, why am I here? So it's not just the Philippines. All right, thanks for watching. Yeah.